whenever I get gloomy with the state of relationships. I think about the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. General opinion starting to make out that we live in a world of divorce and isolation, but, but I, I don't, don't see, see that. that. Seems to me that love is everywhere. Often it's not particularly well expressed, but it's always there. But emotional intimacy goes beyond just saying I love you, holding hands or sharing secret glances or understandings with your partner. It's about sharing your innermost thoughts, feelings and fears and desires in an environment filled with trust, understanding and mutual respect. Now this is particularly hard because we weren't taught how to do this in high school. But if you dig for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that emotional intimacy is all around. Now, if I could sing, I would burst out into intimacy is all around us just to make it really Love Actually themed, but I shall spare you that audio torture. Instead, I'm gonna talk in this video about 20 questions to get to emotional intimacy in your relationship with a little help from Love Actually. My name is Oliver and I'm a couples counselor and a family systems therapist and I love helping people grow great relationships, ones that have a lot of emotional intimacy. In this video, I'm gonna give you 20 questions to build emotional intimacy in your relationship. But before we go there, let's get really clear on what emotional intimacy is and how you get there. So emotional intimacy is about true connection with your partner, which is much more than declarations of love or romantic gestures. It's also not the same as sexual intimacy. That's a whole other video. But if you're in a long-term relationship with someone, I don't think there's gonna be much sexual intimacy without the emotional connection that we're talking about in this video. Intimacy starts inside of us by knowing our feelings and being able to think about them in such a way that we uh, don't get swept up in them and we're not consumed by them. Our thoughts and the way that we use our thoughts to talk to ourselves regulate our feelings. Thoughts also help us turn our feelings into words that we can share with another person. True intimacy is when a self deeply relates to another person as an equal. They're not idealized or devalued. They're not too close. When you're not close enough, you might feel emotionally disconnected. You might miss essential aspects of the relationship, just like you can't see every feature that there is on my face right now. But when you get too close, you end up fusing with that person and you don't know where you end and the other person begins. You get so close, you can't focus on me anymore. Things get blurry and really confusing. Uh, thoughts, feelings, self and other are the foundation of differentiation of self, a concept by Murray Bowen. And there's like 500 other videos on my YouTube channel that I think you should really watch if you're curious about learning more about intimacy and relationships. There are four steps to emotional intimacy in a relationship and I made this acronym called FEED. So this first step in developing emotional intimacy is to identify what you're feeling. And of course, there's a million different examples in Love Actually, but the one that comes to my mind is Sam. At the beginning of the movie, Sam is moody and quiet and not sharing what he's feeling with anyone. And his stepdad is really worried, starts guessing, like, is it mom? Is it school? Are you being bullied? And you can see the anxiety in Liam Neeson's very serious looking face there. But then comes the reveal from Sam and he says, Well, truth is, actually, I'm in love. So you probably figured this out ages ago, but labeling that feeling, even in that moment, brings him and all of us watching a sense of clarity and sometimes relief. Remember, naming it is taming it. Just the act of labeling a feeling, understanding what's going on inside of us is helpful. And this clip is a perfect example of the first step in building emotional intimacy. Identify what it is that you're feeling. So step one is to take a page out of Sam's book. Pause, reflect, try to really understand what it is that you're feeling. You might have to grab a copy of your feelings wheel if you're really stuck. You start on the inside of the wheel uh, because we usually always know if we're mad, sad or glad. And as you work your way out, you'll find more nuanced wording that will hopefully pinpoint more accurately what it is that you're feeling. Quick side note, if you're into feelings, I finally figured out how to upload things to Etsy and we've got our own store going on. So you might wanna check out some of the feelings wheel related items we have there. I'll put the link below. Step two, mark. The second part of the feed process stands for express, which is all about expressing what you're feeling. And that is actually a step often easier said than done. 
So to illustrate this, let's look at the most famous scene from Love Actually. Mark is hopelessly in love with his best friend's wife, Juliet. And in this iconic scene, he uses these cue cards to tell her, to me, you are perfect. And it's a beautiful sentiment, but it's not a feeling. Mark fumbles in the feed process. And this is exactly why he's not with her. He doesn't express any feelings at all to her. And even in this scene, he shares a thought about Juliet, not a feeling. I get that there's a lot of feelings being conveyed. We all kind of swooned, Kira Knightley swooned, but as a couples therapist who wants to help Mark express his feelings, he's failing. And this is the trap that most of us fall into. We say things like, I feel like you don't love me anymore. Not a feeling. I feel that you always do this. Also not a feeling. I feel unloved. I feel frustrated because you keep doing this. Those are feelings. And they are much more direct, a little more controversial, they're much more vulnerable for sure, but that is the key to emotional intimacy. If you want more videos like this on emotional intimacy or more videos on relationships or just to hear me talk more about love actually, I can quote most of the movie, please hit subscribe. <laughs> it's a form of feedback that lets me know that you want more of these videos. Step three, ensure that you are listening and or being heard. So remember the Colin Firth scene where Jamie and Aurelia are conversing, each speaking in their own language. She's Portuguese, he's English, and they seem to be having a conversation, but thanks to the subtitles, we as the audience realize that they're totally missing each other, not understanding anything, and it's this quite delightful portrayal of miscommunication. And that is something that is all too familiar in relationships. My bibliotech not fast copies. I really must do copies. <laughs> You know, there better not be eels in here. I can't stand eels. There's no embarrassed. I think you is so sorry. This scene beautifully captures the essence of step three in the feed framework. Um, it's the importance of not just speaking about your feelings, but truly listening and understanding your partner. Jamie and Aurelia's interaction is kind of like this metaphor for how couples talk to each other without really hearing what they're saying. They're physically present, but emotionally distant. In relationships, it's not enough just to express our feelings. We need to ensure our partner is really listening and we need to do the same for them when they're t talking to us. So this is about active listening, which means fully concentrating, understanding, responding, and then remembering what is being said and holding on to it. We really have to be speaking the same language as each other to create that bridge of uh, empathy and understanding. So step four is delve, which is all about getting into the details of what you're feeling without losing touch. This is all about providing context and making sense of your emotions that you're sharing um, in relation to the current context. There is a caveat though, because we tend to get swept up in feelings when we're sharing them. Step four is about providing more information without losing touch with the connection that you're having with your partner by getting too emotional or too upset. This is really challenging to do, especially if your partner disagrees with you. It's going to make you feel frustrated and potentially more emotional. If you find yourself losing the connection with your partner when you're talking about your feelings, if you see them shutting down because you're getting too emotional, acknowledge it, admit it, go back to step one, soothe yourself, name the feelings. In love actually, Karen found out that her husband, Alan Rickman, had bought a gold necklace which she assumed was for her, but on Christmas Eve, she opened up uh, a present that she thought was gonna be this necklace, and it was a Joni Mitchell CD, and realizes that the necklace was for another woman, the slutty secretary. She confronts Harry, her husband, um, after the school nativity play, one where there were two lobsters at the birth of Jesus, and she confronts him about it. Imagine your husband bought a gold necklace and come Christmas gave it to somebody else. Would you wait around to find out if it's just a necklace or if it's sex and a necklace or if worst of all it's a necklace and la. Now in the real world this has all kinds of potential to go pear-shaped. It's, it's quite an incredible example of how she maintains contact with Harry and prioritizes that connection so that he can hear her. If she came at him with accusations and heightened emotions I'm not sure Harry would have had the same response. It's not the perfect movie, so she's not actually stating a feeling here, but she is providing more context about what's going on inside of her without becoming overly emotional so Harry doesn't shut down and run off. So now we've learned about feed, these four steps to emotional intimacy. Let's get to those questions. 
And of course, they are all inspired by Love Actually. Don't feel the need to rush and grab pen and paper or take screen grabs or download this. I've put all of these questions and a bit more in a PDF, the link is below. And if you've got any questions about anything that I've said so far, drop me a comment. I can sometimes make an entire video as a response. The first section is inspired by Jamie and Aurelia. Um, what I love about the Jamie and Aurelia plot is that it explores how love can transcend language, cultural barriers, and it focuses on nonverbal and emotional communication. But as we've learned, that's not really the key to emotional intimacy. You have to talk, you have to use your words and those I feel statements. So in this section, I've got questions like, can you share a time when you struggled to express your feelings to me, what you wished had happened instead? What are your deepest fears about being open and vulnerable in our relationship? And how can I alleviate those fears? When do you feel most loved by me? How do you think you normally express your warm and yummy feelings to me? A word of warning about these questions. They're pretty intense because I'm asking you to tell me your feelings that are going towards me. In another video, I talk about the layers of emotional communication. It's called progressive emotional communication. The bottom layers, the deepest layers, are the ones about feelings. The bottom layer of this cake, the deepest, richest, yummiest emotional layer you can get to is when we were able to talk about the feelings that you have towards me and I have that go towards you. Those are excruciatingly painful and you'll notice some of these questions are deliberately provoking answers about that. It's very hard, it's very challenging, it's going to make you a little uncomfortable, but it's really, really good stuff. Mark and Juliet's relationship inspired some more questions about unrequited love. This section delves into talking about complex and difficult emotions within a relationship, because in my humble opinion, Mark is a bit of an emotional disaster. Kind of. But if you think about it, if he was able to talk about his feelings to Juliet, she might not have got married. Instead, what he did was the worst thing you can do, and he kept all of those feelings inside, and he kind of acted out on them by being mean to her and cold and frosty, like, like an eight-year-old kid who's mean to the girl he's got a crush on. Emotional intimacy is about emotional maturity, which means being able to talk about your feelings, naming your feelings, not acting out on them. So the questions are something like, in what ways can unexpressed feelings impact our relationship? Uh, how can we ensure that they don't create misunderstandings or resentment? If you were never to see me again, what would you regret not telling me? What is the thing that you are or were most scared to tell me? David and Natalie is one of my favorite relationships because Martine McCutcheon is a national treasure, an English rose, and this is her perfect moment. You'll get that if you're English. So she falls in love with her boss who happens to be the prime minister. So there are themes of differences in their background. She's rather working class, he's not. Um, he's got a position of power. She's like the secretary. So all these different, very complicated social dynamics in, uh, inspired a whole round of questions for you. Has there been a time when you felt that acknowledging your own weaknesses or mistakes has actually led to us feeling um, more connected or a deeper understanding? How can we encourage more of this in our relationship? We, what are the subjects we avoid talking about and why? What is the one thing that most people don't know about you? Daniel and Sam have this really sweet stepdad, stepson relationship, and it's all about support and encouragement and personal growth. It's such a sweet and tender storyline, and you get to see how awesome of a stepdad Daniel's gonna be. It made me think about the role of support and encouragement in a relationship and getting feedback around uh, what you're doing right or, or could do more of. Can you share a moment when you felt my support significantly contributed to your personal growth and how did that impact our, your view of our relationship? What can we do to improve the way that we encourage and support each other? Who is the person in your family or your life that you most need to repair of? How can I better support you during the week? So Harry and Karen's relationship had a lot of themes going on, really complex things um, about keeping secrets, discussing sexual needs, dealing with hurt feelings. So here are some of the thoughtfully constructed questions that were inspired by their relationship that will help you get to deeper levels of emotional intimacy. 
What has been the impact of keeping secrets on our relationship? In what ways do we need to improve how we talk about sex and desire to ensure that we're both heard and satisfied? What's really hard for you to talk about? What in our relationship is the hardest thing for you to talk about with me? What did you not want me to find out about you? What's the one thing in your life that you feel the most incomplete or need closure around? So there you go. Those are 20 questions to help you improve your emotional intimacy in your relationship. Go easy with each other. These are really challenging and hard. Make sure you download the worksheet. I've spaced out the questions enough so that you can cut them up, put them face down on the table and then pick them up randomly. Don't be cheating and get a head start on your partner. Um, who might not have read them or watched this video. Please hit subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know which your favorite question is, which is the worst question, I don't know. I wanna hear from you so that I know to make uh, more and better videos.